All right, in, uh, in this video, we're talking about being able to graph inverse functions. And uh, in this image here, this image is what is called an ambigram. If you have read Angels and Demons by um, that one guy, I'll put it up here whenever I, I edit this video. I can't remember his name. Dan Brown, um, same guy who wrote Da Vinci Code. Anyway, that or the movie, there's lots of ambigrams in it. So, um, usually these ambigrams have some kind of symmetry to them. They might be a rotational symmetry, so you rotate it, or it might be reflectional. This one, if you reflect, you look, look vertically here, looking downwards, this spells master. And if you reflect it across that line, this 45 degree line right here, it still says master. It's a perfect reflection. And, uh, hey, look at the flipping math logo it does exactly the same thing. I'm taking a graph and I'm flipping it across the line y equals x, which is a 45 degree reflection. Now I'm gonna, if you have epilepsy here, please go ahead and close your eyes right now because I'm gonna do something that's gonna give you probably a bit of a headache. So, ooh, look at that, look at that. Uh, okay, anyway, so. For this little investigation, I've got a question for you. Let's see how much you remember from geometry. Let's say I have a triangle right there in the coordinate plane. What would happen if I took the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates and I switched them? Do you remember what that does to the graph of that triangle? I'll give you a second to think about it. Hmm. Okay, so just for example, if I have the point on here for A, it's at 1, 4. Its new point is going to be at 4, 1. What did that just do to my figure? If I did that to all of my points, this is exactly what it would look like. It has reflection. It looks kind of like that ambigram does. It looks like that flipping math logo up there. It's been reflected across the line y equals x. And what we were talking about in the last video, what an inverse of a function does, it takes, is, it takes, is, it takes the in. Uh, input and the output, the x's and the y's, and it switches places with them. So graphically, this is exactly what inverses of functions are going to do. Okay, that's what happens with inverses. So uh, take a look at the picture here. So here is an actual picture. It's, it's very similar to the flipping math logo there. That uh, the black one is the inverse and the gray one is the original function. So the inverse is just a reflection of the original function across the line y equals x. And the reason why is because if I switch the x and the y coordinates on a graph, it reflects it across the line y equals x. So if I have the point a, b on my original graph, it becomes the point b, a on the inverse. So to graph an inverse, it's very, very simple. To graph an inverse, take all your x coordinates, all your y coordinates, and switch them. Let's try that right here. I just have a, it, it's a piecewise function basically. So let's say that this graph is the graph of f of x. Let's graph the inverse of this function. I don't have an equation to work with. All I have is the picture. Hey, but that's no problem because all I have to do is take my x coordinate and my y coordinate and switch them. So let's try that right here. Just go from left to right. So the far left point is at negative 2, 1. So I'm going to flip it, and it's going to be at 1, negative 2. So here's my first new dot. Okay, and the next dot from left to right is at negative 1, 3. And it's going to turn out to be at 3, negative 1. Anytime you have two dots, go ahead and connect them in the same way that the other two were connected. That way you won't lose track of the direction of things. Okay, the next dot from left to right is this one down here at 1, negative 3. So I'm going to make that negative 3, 1, right here. Go ahead and connect that to this point. We're going to be kind of challenging there. There we go, roughly. And then finally we have this point right up here, the final point in quadrant one, it is at 3, 3. If I switch 3, 3, it becomes 3, 3. And there's the graph of my inverse. Question is, is the inverse, the red one that I just made, is it a function? 
how are you supposed to tell if a graph is a function? Wait, let me switch to it completely. How about purple? Well, it has to pass the vertical line test. So if I put a vertical line anywhere on here, it can only touch the graph once. But this one doesn't. It touches it more than one place. So the answer to this question is the inverse of function, and that's no. And this is what we've said before. Remember the zip line picture? Sometimes I can take I can take a zip line and I can go down, but I can't take that zip line and, and retrace my steps. I can't undo what I just did. Is the original function the one that was in blue? Was that one a function? Yeah, because that one passed the vertical line test. Okay, so let's uh, find the uh, the inverse of this linear function, one half x minus five and then state the domain and the range and then graph them both over here on uh, the coordinate plane. So my equation, my inverse of my equation is, I'm going to switch that f of x, make it a y, and then switch the x and the y, so x is equal to 1 half x minus 5. Add the 5 over x plus 5 equals a half of, oh, that's a y. What the heck's, what, what the heck's happening here? Uh, there we go. That's a y. One half y. Multiply everything by two, so the inverse then is 2x plus 10. Okay, so now I want to graph both of these. I'm going to graph the uh, inverse here in red, 2x plus 10. So here's 10. I obviously can't go up, so let's go down. One down, two, left one. Get a few points. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Down two, left one, down two, left one. Oh, I could go ahead and get that last one. There we go. And uh, there's our graph. What about the original one? Let's go ahead and graph it as well. Let's graph this one in blue. So that one's a half x minus five. It's going to start at uh, negative five. And its slope is one half, so up one. Up one, right two. And, and, da 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 da. One more. Okay, look at this fantastic looking graph. So look at the red line and the blue line. Do they have any relationship to each other? Of course, they are reflections across the line y equals x. Let's, let's just look at the um, y-intercept on this one. This is the point 0, 10. And if I flip those, it becomes 10, 0, right? That's exactly what happens with the inverses. And the graphs, okay, what's the domain of each function? That's pretty easy. Each one of these is all real numbers. All real numbers. Is the inverse, the red one, is it also a function? Yeah. Both the original function and the inverses were both functions. Okay. Now, on the next one, we're just going to look at, this is a cubic function. This is y equals x cubed. Anyway, on this picture, number one for an input of two. If I if x value of two, I put it into the function, what's the output? So just reading off of the graph, we just want to know what is the y value. So um, if I input two, it's a weird place for the two, but that's where it is, and follow it up to uh, where it touches the graph, which is right here at eight. Is it unique? The, what that means is, is that the only one possible? Right? No, that, that's the only place where 2 hits the graph, so the answer to that one is yes. So basically, we have the coordinate 2, 8 on our graph. All right, let's work backwards this time. And this one's asking for an output of 8. So now it's along the y-axis at 8. What was the original input? So going back down, it's at 2 again, 2. Is it unique? Well, that's the only place where the output is 8. So the answer to that one is yes. Which means that, well, again, well, we have this point. If we're working backwards here on the inverse, the inverse would have the point 8, 2. Those two things switch places. So on number 3, what does the answer to those questions tell you about the inverse of the function? And that is that the inverse will be a function. 
it's not always going to happen. Just like on the uh, uh, example seven where we just had a picture of the graph and I tried to do the inverse. Yeah, it wasn't a function. Okay. So let's go ahead and work with the cube root function. Let f of x equal x cubed. Find the inverse. What's the domain of each of those functions? And then graph them. So um, let's go ahead and, since I already have this out here, let's go ahead and graph the, the parent function basically for x cubed. So whenever I cube a number, if I start at 0, 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed, 1 to the third power is 1. And then 2 cubed, if I stick in 2, I'd get 8, which is here. 3 cubed would be 27. It's off my graph. So now let's get some on the negative side. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So here is x cubed. It's the same graph that I had in the previous slide, but the previous slide was just stretched out in a weird kind of way for each of the axes. So let's find the inverse of that now. Um, switch the colors. How about green on this one? And uh, switch the x and the y and make that y cubed is equal to x. I don't know why I wrote it like that, but that's okay. Take the cube root, so y is equal to the cube root of x. Okay, now in order to graph that, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take the original coordinates, the red graph, and I'm just going to switch the x and the y coordinates. So if I work from, say, left to right, down here at the very, very bottom I have negative 2, negative 8. I switch those, it's going to be negative 8, negative 2. Put it on. Okay, the next dot is negative 1, negative 1, so it stays in the same place. Then I have the origin, 0, 0, switch them, it's still 0, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1. Wow, those three points are exactly the same spot. And then finally, 2, 8 becomes 8, 2. And then draw your graph through these points. Whoa, I pretend like I didn't miss those points at all. So again, reflection across the line y equals x. What's the domain of each of these? Look, this is the whole x-axis. Both of these are all real numbers. I can cube whatever I want. I can take the cube root of whatever I want. And uh, so, is the inverse a, a function? Yeah, it is. Okay, so now we're going to look at a more complicated case, the quadratic one in the next video.